Oh, it is a V-nickel. Sweet. Eighteen ninety four, baby. Well, um, here in this little park. I've hunted it many times, but never with the AT Max, so I'm going to give it a try with the Max. Um, I have pulled at least one Civil War relic out of this park, fuse cap from an artillery shell. There used to be a manufacturer here in this town that made those shells, so not too surprising you might find some of them here. But uh, interested to see what the Max does with this ground, see if we get uh, something else cool. I can only hunt for a short while, I have a chaperone today. Um, I developed a blood clot in my right leg and uh, as a result I'm kind of hobbling around. It hurts, but it's not too bad and I convinced my wife that great, <laughs> uh, with the great powers of personal persuasion to let me come out for just a little bit, so it's just an hour. Anyway, she's here to chaperone me. She's going to be the camera woman for the day. So let's get started. See if we can dig something up out here. Getting kind of a sketchy signal here. It's uh, mm, well, it's reading in the 80s, and it's reading deep. So I'm gonna try this one. See how we do. This ground is very wet. See, we got probably junk, but you never know. Until you dig. Oh yeah, that's that is some wet, soggy ground. All right. Let's see if we're in the plug. Not, not in the plug. All right, we're in the hole. It sounds weird though. I think it's right there somewhere. Let's see, is this it? Hey, there she blows. And it is. Ah. Just a modern penny. Ooh, that ground is nice and soft. That's got a good job. Sixties in one direction, forties in the other. This is almost certainly crap, but we dig it. I think it's probably still in there. Oh no, maybe I got it. I got it. Well. Ah. Psych. I <laughs> thought it was a ring for a second. But it is a bottle cap. Crap. Ooh, this is super soft. Okey doke Last week when I was uh, at the property where we found the Indian head pennies, the guy there, a really nice guy, and he was saying to me, boy, this hobby must take a lot of patience. Yep. <laughs> Some days you go out and you just don't find anything. There we go. Top of the can. Oh, man. So you guys don't get to see most of my finds. That's most of my finds. Mostly work. Cut that out later. <laughs> okay. Uh, I got a pretty good signal here. One of the better signals I've had all day. Well, all day in the last half an hour or so. And uh, being the sucker for punishment I am, I decided to live dig it, which means it's probably going to end up being a can. But 
Hope springs eternal. It ain't shiny. It must be a copper penny. We hope for an Indian head. I don't think we're gonna get one. Nope. Memorial. It's too bad. It sounded good. Oh, wait a minute. I'm still getting something. Hmm. Sounds like it's here. Let's see if I can see it from the side here. Hmm. Nope. I think I need to cut a second second plug right here. Yeah, nothing's peeking out at me. Is this one in the club? In the clump? It is indeed. Whoa. Getting a 91, that can't be right. There's no way there's a silver half in here. Whatever it is, it's right there. And it is... It's a quarter. Modern quarter. Oh, that's why it rang up high. Look at that. It's two modern quarters. When you get two quarters close together, uh, on the AT series, uh, quarters generally ring up 86, 87, sometimes 88. But if you get two and they're packed close together, they'll ring up like a half dollar. They'll ring up 90, 91. All right, let's check one more time. Well, this would be a coin spill. There's more trouble in here. Right where the two quarters were, there'll be a third quarter. It's got to be right there. I'm going to get my probe and just pop it. Uh, it's another quarter. Three quarters. Also modern. Any more? Anything else? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Okay. 75 cents. Excuse me, 76. We did pull a penny. 76 cents from one hole. All right. Anything else? That's everything that was in this hole. Now we're going to put it all back together. Neat as you please. Just goes back together just like a jigsaw, the way it came out. This just folds right, this little half moon will fold right back down in there. Like that. Put the loose dirt in, and then this piece will sink right in. Just tuck it. There we go. This grass over here, as you can see, is mostly brown. So. No problem. Now, a lot of people uh, will tell you to do a uh, a three-quarter cut or a half cut. In other words, you dig the plug, you go three quarters of the way around, you leave a quarter of it attached, flip it up. Um, I used to do that, but I discovered that the uh, you had a lot of trouble getting the plugs to go back in evenly when you do that. Um, and also, when you do that, when you're folding it back, you hear a ripping sound. You're ripping the roots along the place where you fold the plug. So you will actually damage the roots in that little spot, so you could cause a little browning. So I prefer to go all the way around and bring the whole plug out as one piece. But, uh, you know, as long as the ground is nice and moist and the grass isn't under stress, either way works fine. Just, uh, you know, be conscientious when you dig. All right. Well, my leg is starting to hurt. It's been about an hour. Yeah, it really is smarting. Um, so we're gonna head home. I didn't really find too much, uh, but it was still a good hunt. I got to go out with my honey. It's nice having her around. And uh, here, let's have a look at what we got. Okay, so first the work. Um, there's always work. We got this, uh, lots and lots of cans. We got this tube of lubricant. Uh, I believe it's personal lubricant. It's called Sutra, lovely. Um, cans, bottle caps, one old piece of iron, part of something or other, don't know what. Doesn't look like part of a shell to me though, so. Uh, and then in our finds, uh, we have one key. This is an Ilko key. It's uh, made, um, the company that made this started right in this city, so. Um, then we got uh, dollar and quarters, dollar twenty, dollar twenty-five, dollar thirty. All clad. No Wheaties, no old coins, no artifacts. Oh well, only had an hour. Um, but I do need to go home and prop this leg up. Mmm. That's a lot of goodies. 
So we're uh, we're getting ready to run the tumbler and uh, see if we can clean some of this stuff up. I am stuck at home, of course, because of my leg, um, but that doesn't mean that we can't have a little fun. So I'm going to tumble this stuff overnight, and we'll have another look at it in the morning and see how it looks then. Hopefully it'll look a lot better. Uh, first thing we do is add a little dish soap. I just use the uh, Cascade. You want dishwasher soap. You don't want something that foams up a lot. I mean, it's going to foam up anyway, but you don't want something that goes crazy suds. So we'll just drop a little of that in there. It doesn't have to be too much. That's plenty. There we go. And then we can go ahead and just add water. That's the other lubricating medium. And we don't want to fill this to the top. We just want to get the water to cover up the fines for the most part. And we'll bring them right to the top of the fines. That's pretty good. I might add a little bit more. The thing is, if you add too much water, then the fines just sort of slosh around. The water separates them all. They never come into contact with each other. I think that's, yeah, that's plenty. And uh, because they slosh around and don't come into contact with each other, well, then you don't actually get the, uh, the grinding that you want, right? All right, so now we just put our vacuum-sealed top on here. And then we hammer on the cover, on the washer, screw it on, and we're ready to put it on the tumbler. So let's go do that. There's my tumbler, the QT12 Rotary Tumbler by Lortone. It's the same tumbler that Nugget Noggin uses, if you ever watch him. He's a good YouTuber. And now, just gotta plug it in, which should be fun to do one-handed. There we go. There we go. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's it kind of going a little slow. I think it's because uh, it's such a big load. There's a lot of heavy stuff in there. But we're gonna let that run all night. It's about 10 o'clock now. I'm gonna go to bed take my pills and go to bed. And when I get up around 7 in the morning, we'll unplug this and take it outside, Ooh, onto the back porch and dump it out. Huh, all right then. And, uh, you know, with the tumbler all the way down in the basement, I can't really hear it up here unless you listen real hard, so I think we'll be all right. All right, we'll see what it looks like in the morning. for about um, seven, eight hours. That's plenty. Okay. A little air in there. A little rime of filth underneath the edge of the thing. I can already see it, so it'll be dirty. There we go. Hmm. Looks like our buckle is nice and clean. Ordinarily, I would just dump this up. We have some really large items that I can just sort of reach in and retrieve, so I think I'm going to do that instead. So let's grab this bucket. Mm, that looks nice. That came out really... You can really see the original brassy color now of that buckle. This came from the 1876 farm. Lovely old brass buckle. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Wow, what a lovely little bell. Yeah, that came out nice. Then we had this weird piece of farm equipment. It was all rusted. It had ball bearings inside of it. Eh, it's still a mess, but we've knocked off a lot of the rust and the crud. So that sucker. Oh yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff inside there that's been loosened up. Oh, I think I may be imagining it, but I think I heard the ball bearings move. I'm not imagining it. They are moving now. Look at that. All that crashing around in there, bumping into stones has loosened them to the point where they move. That's 
probably got crud inside of it. Yeah, a little bit of junk fell out. Not much, though. How neat! Alright, this is from the 1840 house. I think it's a tack buckle of some kind. Or, I mean, I guess it could be a small shoe buckle. There we go. We've knocked a lot of corrosion off of it. Oh, to the point where the post moves. That's nice. Yeah, it was very heavily corroded. Also dug from the um, the eighteen uh, seventy six farm. This is of course modern, but came out looking good. This baby D buckle came from the uh, seventeen forty one house in episode four. This big old copper pipe end. Oof. This came from the, um, the 1860s house, the house where the lawn was all overgrown. I only found a couple of things, uh, a couple of modern pennies, this, and uh, something that looked like an old-fashioned collar clip or napkin clip. That polished up really nice. Beautiful how the copper color came out. Something. Oh, this is one of the square nails from the 1840 house. I wanted to keep one. I thought this was a pretty good example. So I kept this one, tumbled it. It came out nice, pretty clean. I do believe if you sharpen the point of that, you could use it again. <laughs> okay, um... Oh, there's the gate latch from the 1840 house. Uh, there's the little uh, lock that I dug at the park. I don't know what episode that was. Episode 2, Heartstopper. Yeah, that was the same day I found this heavy piece of copper or brass. There's the key that we just dug last night at the other park where the ground was all wet. There's a clad quarter I dug the other day which struck me as very odd. Got a big old lump on it. See this? 98. This is a big lump on Washington's cheek, right? But when I flip it over, I, I really don't see a matching dent on the other side. What the heck is that, huh? I mean, I, I would expect to see a big dent punched in this side, but there isn't. It's just... I think the coin may have come that way. Isn't that odd? Hmm. Wacky. I guess that wraps up the stuff that's in the in the uh, tumbler, and uh, well, I can might be able to edit a little footage out of this. Anyway, I'll see if I can get this stuff cleaned up. Seeing as how with this leg, I'm not going anywhere anyway. All right, take care, guys. It's true. Sometimes zinc pennies will come out of the ground looking like a rat chewed on them, but how often does that happen? Cut! Cut! The 1862 church did not work out. Um, I went there, I really got my hope, I shouldn't have, I really got my hopes up high, so I was really excited when I got there, uh, and there just wasn't anything there. Um, I did the basement. It was really, really full of iron. I pulled a couple small brass escutcheons from furniture out of there, but that was it. Lots and lots of nails and stuff. And the um, the lawn didn't seem to be original. Um, the church had aluminum siding on it, and I think that the when they had the church sided, which I, I'm guessing was in the 80s, um, they redid the lawn um, because I got no deep targets. 
and the deepest targets I did get were all little tiny pieces of aluminum siding, little snippets left behind by the workers who were siding the church. And I hit the property for a good three, four hours and kind of got discouraged and then just said, okay, time to wrap this up. Um, so, I don't really have any footage for you from the 1862 church. There's really nothing worth seeing. So today, being August 19th, uh, I went to the 1876 farm and I had a wonderful day. Uh, no old coins, but some beautiful relics. Um, and it's going to take me a little time to edit that footage. So I'm going to end this episode here. And uh, you get to see what it's like when you're a detectorist and you're laid up. But stay tuned. In a few days, I'll get episode 8 out, which will all be footage from the 1876 farm. And it's loaded with relics, um, including a piece of silver. So there'll be something uh, something with a little sparkle and a little value in there, and uh, just some, some lovely old relics. Uh, and as long as I'm out here, remember this thing? This was from the 1840 house, uh, and I was not able to get an identification out of it at the time I released that video. I since have gotten some information on this object. Um, I don't know for certain, but I believe this is called a foot valve. And it would have been used for a well, uh, a shallow well, where um, you know you use the hand pump to pump out the water. The hand pump would have plunged in and out of this opening on the top. This would have been part of a well for pumping water, which the 1840 house must have had at one time. Um, and the well has long since been removed, but the old foot pump was still uh, buried in the ground. So that's what that was, that mystery item. Cool. All right. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I realize there weren't a lot of great finds. There's a lot of just sitting around. Um, but I, I hope you'll get something out of it. And uh, I will definitely see you on the next hunt.